full face of makeup for you guys per the request of a girl I went to high school with so thank you so much Ashley. So I'll be showing you guys a moderately neutral fall look. It's been my go-to lately now that the leaves are changing color. It's very warm and glowing without being too bright or coral so it just screams fall. And I have a few fall lip options to show you as well so please thumbs up and subscribe and let's get started. So we'll be working with shadows today that risk a lot of fallout. With that being said, we'll do the eyes first so whatever falls we can clean up. So start by priming your eyes with a concealer that matches your skin tone. I've been using a liquid concealer a lot lately for this because I like how it blends into the face. So place a dime sized amount onto your lid and then take some sort of dense brush. I'm using this Eco Tools one from their five piece brush set and spread that all over the lid up to the brow bone. Then I'm going to set that because it makes the shadows easier to blend later. I'm taking a shadow close to my skin tone on the Sigma E60 and placing that everywhere that I put the concealer. A setting powder also works fine for this. And for this look, I'll be using mainly the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. This is one of my most loved purchases because not only are the like shadows of quality, but they smell. Oh my god. <sighs> I use the color White Chocolate to set my shadow base, by the way. So first I'll take the color Salted Caramel, which is a very warm brown shade that isn't too dark, on a brush that's nice and fluffy but not too large. This one is by BH Cosmetics. I'm going to buff that back and forth into the crease. Make sure you start this on the outer part of the crease so that most of the color is deposited there and you can diffuse inward as you go. So holding the brush downward is a nice way to make sure that this transition color doesn't create a harsh line. I don't know how or why, but it works. Next, we're going to take a brush that is more dense and slightly more flat in shape with a mid-tone darker brown. This is the color semi-sweet from the palette. Work that into the crease, but keep it below our transition color. Start in the outer corner as before, and only touch the brush to your skin lightly so that the product doesn't overextend itself. And then work that inward lightly and stop at the iris. Take little bits of product each time you go to build the color. Starting with too much is going to leave you with unblended lines that don't look artisanal. Once you're happy with how dark the crease is, go in with either a clean fluffy, fluffy brush or the same one you applied the transition shade with and lightly blend the whole thing so that all the colors mesh. If needed, take your skin colored shadow and blend the edges so that they're nice and soft. Next, I'm going to leave this palette and take the color Reveal by Sigma, which is a reddish copper with some shimmer. And I'll take the Sigma E55, use any dense and flat eye brush, and mix this eyeshadow with the color Creme Brulee from the Chocolate Bar palette. This is a soft gold color, and I forgot to show you guys um, the color in the pan, so I'm sorry for that. Mixing these is going to create a nice bronze shade that's perfect for fall. So for this step, I'll wet my brush. I like to use contact solution in a spray bottle because I know it won't hurt my eyes. Spritz that all over the brush, then dip it into the lighter and darker shade respectively. Then I'll pack that onto the outer half of my lid. Wetting the brush makes the product go on very pigmented and keeps as much shadow from falling onto the face. And this step is really simple, just stop halfway through your eye with this color. Next, pick up a lighter shimmery shade of your choosing. I'm using the color Marzipan from the palette, which is like a shimmery pale gold. Wet another flat brush like before, or just clean off that same one, dip it into the color, and pack that onto the outer half of your lid. Once that color is nice and concentrated, wipe the excess off and pull the color slightly into the bronze on the other half of the lid. This will blend them and create a nice duochrome quality. Now for a look like this, I don't like to do black liner because it takes away from the natural quality of the look. Instead, I'm taking a brown pencil. This is the Kajal Pencil Kahal from Essence Cosmetics called Teddy. I'm going to messily place that on my lash line, but don't worry about precision on this at all. Then take a pencil brush. This one is from Smashbox. It smudge that line so it's nice and smoky. Next, put on your mascara. I'm using Avon Big and Daring. Feel free to curl your lashes, mascara them, and skip falsies, but I need falsies because I have no lashes. These are the Eiler 145s. You can use more natural lashes, but these are my favorite of all time, so I'm using them. I'll have an in-depth lash tutorial coming soon. Then I'm priming my face using Rimmel Fix and Perfect Primer, which I like because it evens the skin tone and brings warmth to the skin. I use a pea-sized amount and distribute it all over the face, and then I'm applying my foundation, and when this is the Revlon Color Stay 24 Hour in the color buff. I'm doing my foundation as usual, and then concealing using Maybelline Fit Me Concealer as usual as well. I will link my in-depth foundation routine below so you can pair it with this look. Once my under eyes are concealed, I'm going to take the color Semi-Sweet again on a flat definer brush by BH Cosmetics and pack that under my bottom lash line. Then take the smudging brush from before with salted caramel and blend that out for maximum smokiness. Make sure to connect it with the shadow hanging out on your outer corner. Then fill in the waterline with the Teddy Pencil and apply bottom mascara. My next step is to fill in my brows, and I'm not going to go super in-depth because I will also be posting an updated brow tutorial soon that will go in depth. But I start by defining the top of the brow and then the bottom. Then when there isn't any product, as much product on the brush, I should say, I line and fill in the inner part of my brows. 
Then I just take a ton of product and fill in the tail and the main bulk of my brow. Then I diffuse the color a little bit and with my brush and then I'm done. Next go back into the palette and take Champagne Truffle, which is just a shimmery champagne color, and place that underneath the brow bone. I like to do this with one hit and diffuse it from the center of the arch in both directions so that the color isn't too obvious. Then place the same color, this is all on my accent, on any accent brush you want by the way, on the tear ducts with the same one hit concept. That's it for the eyes you guys. And then for my favorite part of any fall look, getting that skin all warm and glowy. First I'll contour with a mid-tone brown, uh, mid brown powder. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. I like to take a small dense brush for this and flatten it with my fingers and really carve out the cheekbones while making the fishy face. Blend it slightly once you have that nice line. And then I'll also be posting an in-depth contouring video for you guys as well. Use the same color to hit the sides of the nose and the center of your cupid's bow right above the lips. Then take a very warm, lighter brown. I'm using my Essence Sun Club bronzer on a fluffier contouring brush, and then this one's a Sigma F40. Really buff that shade on top of your contour lines. The idea of this is to both blend out that contour and bronze the skin. I also place this color below my chin in a V shape and onto the sides of my forehead and down my temples. For blush, I always like to take something more corally. This is NYX Baked Blush in Sugar Mama, but if you have darker skin, then opt for a deeper orange. I'm using a really dense and slightly rough Bare Minerals brush to pack that onto the apples of my cheeks and up of the edge, up the edge of where I bronzed. To highlight a look like this, I'm taking a very, very tiny amount of that color Marzipan, and I'm diffusing it at the top of the cheekbones, on the upper part of the tip of my nose, on the sides of my cupid's bow, on the center of my chin, and in the center of my forehead. Lastly, we'll do our lips. I have a light, a dark, and a bright option for you guys. For lighter fall lip, I like to take a very warm nude. This is the NYX Simply Nude Lip Crayon in Honey. I just fill my entire lip with that, and then I take a warm brown lip pencil that's not too dark and line right outside of that color. Be light-handed when you're doing this so that you don't get a hot mess. Then squeeze your lips together plenty of time so that the pencil and the crayon blend together. For a bright option, I think that an intense coral works perfectly. This is OCC's Lip Tar in the color Grandma. For lip tars, take the brush that comes with them and carefully fill the bulk of the lip, and then line them with the end of the brush. Once that product is set a little bit, apply one other layer so that it's nice and pigmented. Lastly, a very deep and dark lip is my favorite for fall, especially when it's matte. I'm lining my lips first just to keep them from bleeding throughout the day. This is Avon Lip Liner in Red Brick. I really like to round out the cupid's bow because it adds a layer of mystery and sex appeal. Then take your favorite matte deep red lipstick. This is NYX Matte Lipstick in Siren. Fill out the entire lip with that and you have the perfect dark fall lip. So there's your full face for fall, you guys. Now go put on a scarf and some boots and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.